Well, hello, everyone. I hope you can hear us. All right, so this is as promised. Okay, who do you have? I have Buttercup. So that's Buttercup, and this is Buttercup's brother, whose name is Lord Shax. So this is my family. These are our COVID puppies for the summer. And this is my second son, Christian. He's my big beach blonde, curly headed, no COVID haircut, <laughs> eight year old. Can you say hi to everybody? Hi. <laughs> So these are, okay, there we go. If you got puppies, hold them up. There's, I see Jonathan. Who else has got some, who else has got some friends, some four-legged friends? I see Kathleen. Oh my God. Aw. Aw. I gotta go get mine. All right. Megan's bringing back some four-legged friends. Sid. Aw. Oh, look at Sid. Anybody else? Oh. <coughs> Megan, Megan's our uh, FEMBA Council president. She's gonna help co-host. Oh, look at Nicole. Oh, that's a, oh, that's a big. Who is that? Who is? Oh, <laughs> Edith has a human. <laughs> oh, that's so this is funny. Peaches. You guys will see a lot of her. He is the VP of marketing. Ah, oh, the VP. <laughs> oh, of her that's official so title. Oh my gosh. Okay, you, you want to take Very one? unimpressed. Okay, take one. Okay. All right. Whoa. Bye bye. <laughs> Thank you, Christian. Thanks, buddy. All right. Well, welcome to uh, FIMBA 45 number, what is this? Four? Four. Okay. Number four. So I have a whole bunch of co hosts this week. I am four hours and 54 minutes from going on the only vacation I'm going to have for the whole summer. Um, so I am so grateful to have my co-host Sarah Anderson today and also next week's pre-co-hosts, Perry Poussard, Megan Roberts, and James Fang. James, who you met um, last week. So uh, we were testing to make sure that I can hand off the meeting to them so they can run it without me next week. Um, uh, thanks for letting us bring the puppies. That's been the highlight of my family's summer is uh, is. Uh, rescuing, adopting, whatever you want to call it. Uh, we received those two little puppies about three weeks ago, and it's the best thing. Um, I, have a, I have a new uh, Drive Time podcast with um, a really uh, great story. Another one of the, the 2020 students who was crowdsource nominated by his classmates, um, Rob Busalachi, and I'm going to release that this afternoon. His um, story is really inspiring. He's uh, a Marine who wanted to transition out of the military and he uh, got a great intern, actually I think he did two internships in finance and investment banking and he's now brand new at Barclays as an investment banker. Uh, he was the recipient of the J uh, John Wooden Global Leadership Award, which is a, a really high accolade uh, within Anderson. They, they choose one person each from FEMBA, from Executive MBA, from full-time and from um, either MSBA or MFE, I can't remember which, but they choose four per year. And he was the FEMBA recipient of that He's just got a really inspiring story. Um, so I'll share that later this afternoon. There are 24, potentially up to 24 people on the, the um, FEMBA 45 right now who have not even gotten their admit letter yet. They are in the process of getting their welcome calls from my team this morning. So uh, if you got that email from me and you don't know what it means, doesn't mean you're admitted. Yes, you are. So welcome, you're the newest uh, folks admitted. Uh, we always try to do a welcome call first and then send the admin email. But I love these FEMBA 45s. They're a, an opt-in social networking 45 minute that we've been doing. So I wanted to give you a shot at that. So thanks for jumping in. And if you haven't gotten your welcome call, you will. And you will definitely get your official admission email notification this afternoon. Um, it'll, it'll just say you have an update. And then when you log in, it'll, it'll tell you that you're admitted. Um, for everybody right now, if you could just rename yourself, first name, last name, Obviously, put your class year and then an adjective that describes you. So I'm going to rename myself Dylan Stafford. I'm staff and I'm optimistic. All right. So if you could do that real quick, it helps me whenever we, we do the tabulation later. If you put your class year, it just helps us know who was here. Um, last week was uh, FEMBA 45 number three, and we, we hit triple digit participation for the first time. We had 62 people the first time or 67 maybe. 92 people the second week, I had 104 people after that. And now we're already up to 122 and that is usually logs a little bit low. And that's all for me. So that's it for me. And so I would now like to introduce Sarah Anderson, who is my co-host. Those of you who were here two weeks ago got to meet 
Sarah. Sarah is one of the uh, executive board leaders on FEMA Council. She is the vice president of alumni affairs and uh, she's a preacher's kid just as I am. So we approach this with a very, it takes a village. We're very much into the whole person. We, we want your, your head, your heart, your gut. We, we want your spirit. We want your UCLA onboarding just to be holistic and wonderful. And Sarah is my co-host in today's endeavor. So I will now hand it forward towards Sarah. So oh, thank you, Dylan. Hello, everyone. Hopefully everybody can hear me okay. Um, really quickly, if you guys can go to your participants and just by a show of hands, I would like to know how many people here, this is your first time attending one of these. Um, we've had four of them. Um, we have some, you know, people that, that have probably attended a lot um, and some people that haven't. So, oh, wow, I am loving this. I am loving this. All right. So welcome to our, our handful of newbies. Um, as Dylan said, these are basically just 45 minutes where we get a chance to network, um, where we get a chance to transfer knowledge, where we get a chance to you know, learn about each other. Um, each time we try, I'm new kinda. <laughs> I love you, Megan. So Ooh, 14 participants. Nice, nice. And I'm guessing a bunch of those are probably our new admits. So congrats and welcome. Um, we like to try on each one of these FEMBA 45s to have kind of a theme um, or to have something that we touch, touch on. Um, last week, I know James uh, dealt with clubs and I'm actually going to uh, jump off of his Thing a little bit and um, mention a club called Joint Ventures, which he might have mentioned. I might call out Perry and I might have him come off mute at some point. But what I want to talk about this week is I want to talk about inspiration and I want to talk about what keeps a FEMBA going, what keeps a FEMBA motivated and I wanna step away a little bit from the business side, and I wanna talk about what inspires you to live your life. Because one of the things that you will come to find as you start business school, or for those of us that are fully embedded in business school, is that you are going to reach points while you are in school that you, you don't know how to keep going. You're tired, you're exhausted, you're frustrated. Um, and so, you know, for all of our 2023s that are just coming in, you know, a couple of things to think about, a couple of things that you're gonna wanna consider. Having a conversation with your significant other. How are you going to step away from business school? How are you going to still have a social life? What are the things in your life that you want to make sure that you keep. Um, I'm a certified scuba diver. I love scuba diving. I love getting in the water. I love being under the ocean. I have not gotten a chance to go scuba diving since I started FEMBA. Now, part of the reason that I haven't is because I did all day Saturday classes. That's something that I knew, you know, I wanted to do. So it was something that I was willing to accept. Um, that being said, I, you know, this year have told myself, um, once I start electives that I will get back to going scuba diving because it brings me joy. Um, I have a specific song that I listen to, um, before I start some of my schoolwork and I am that crazy 90s kid. Um, I was born in the 80s. I was in, you know, junior high and high school in the 90s. Um, it's Backstreet Boys. I dance around to Backstreet Boys in my living room um, in order to get myself inspired to keep going. And so what I want you guys to think about, um, and if you guys have questions, about, you know, like ideas um, or things on campus. I'm gonna have Perry come off mute here in a minute um, and I'm gonna have him go ahead and um, talk a little bit about joint ventures. 
Um, and then I'm going to briefly have Dylan kind of, um, you know, talk a little bit about his idea of it takes a village. Um, and then, you know, if you guys have questions, um, you know, I want you guys to, to ask those. And then for our breakout session, you guys are going to talk about what inspires you. You're going to talk about, you know, do you, do you write poetry? Do you listen to music? Do you crochet? Do you do Taekwondo? You know, um, do you like to go to the beach? You know, um, do you have a date night with your significant other that you're going to keep? Um, because as much as you need to be focusing on the business aspect of business school, you also need to be focusing on making sure that you are staying you because that's going to make you the best Anderson Femba you can be. So with that, Perry, I'm totally putting you on the spot. If you want to come off mute and if you just want to talk a little bit about joint ventures, what joint ventures is um, as, a, as a club, um, and then we'll swing over to Dylan. Um, and Dylan, you can tell us what inspires you. Um, Perry, you tell us what inspires you. And then if any of our, if any of our, uh, our Zoomies have questions, um, I'll put all the hands down and you guys can raise your hands um, to ask questions. So Perry, take it away. Thank you. Uh, hello, everybody. So good to find, I, it's my first time getting to one of the Femme 45, so I'm very excited to be here and meet a number of you. Um, to touch on joint ventures, as Sarah said, um, I am the VP of Femme Relations for Joint Ventures, which was just created this year because Joint Ventures did not recognize that, Fem that FEMBA was a part of their group. They thought that FEMBAs had their own set of organizations. So it just goes to show that we are very much a part of making sure that conversation is happening across campus and creating that one Anderson that you'll hear so much about um, as you go through the program. Joint Ventures is all about families and significant others supporting you through your journey here at Anderson. And we want them to, to feel a part of the Anderfam. Uh, that's, that's really what Joint Ventures is all about. And the, the role I'm trying to fill in Joint Ventures is making sure that we have as many FEMBA friendly uh, Joint Ventures opportunities as, as possible. Um, obviously, we're all having a, a grand time figuring this out in the virtual world we're having for the first quarter. Um, but that anybody that has that support system that they want to bring into the fold at Anderson, please, please reach out to me or anyone on the joint ventures team. We would love to have your family be a part of the Anderson family and, and really allow them to see how they can better support you and support each other. Um, I will say the reason I joined joint ventures was because my husband and I started a similar organization at my law school, which I did before this. Um, and that support system is so crucial and so important to, as Sarah mentioned, getting through those, those tough times. How am I getting through? It's the people around me. Um, so that's really what we're all about. What inspires me and really allows me to get through those tough times is not only my husband, but the work that we do. We're both entertainment producers. Um, he is a writer director. Um, I very much am on the creative production side of producing and telling stories that matter. That is what really is, it, to us, the big part of what our lives are about. And so it inspires us to, to meet people, to figure out the stories we're gonna tell and to tell them. Um, so for any breakout room I end up in, uh, I can talk more about that, but I don't wanna take too much time on it since these are true. All right, thank you so much, Perry. Um, Dylan, I would be interested to know what inspires you? What keeps you going? Well, I've, I've said this before. You guys are going to run the economy that my children get to participate in. You know, so 15, 20 years from now, when my eighth grader and third grader are out there in the world trying to figure out what to do, they're going to get hired by people like you. So that's, that keeps it very real, very personal for me. Uh, my theme song has been, my COVID theme song has been the Hamilton soundtrack. I probably listened to that maybe 60 times in the last four months. I play that all the time. I've got the daggum thing memorized, um, you know, and it's seriously like, how, how, does, how does an executive maintain the energy to be an exec? If anybody can be CEO for a day, but can you be CEO of your life for the next 30 or 40 years? And to me, 
you do that by building a village, right? And you, advice we could give to new admits and for upper class participants who are here today is like bring people along with you. What's in it for them that you're making this investment of time and money and effort for the next 30 years of your career, right? And you're gonna have flat tire days. You're gonna have days where work goes poorly, you don't feel well, you didn't get enough sleep, uh, the, the meeting went poorly, and you need people in advance who can be your lifeline. So, you know, I like to say, pick two from your family, your mom and your sister, pick two from your, your best friends, your college roommate and your, you know, your high school best friend, and then pick two from your, you know, that you'll meet during leadership foundations, pick two from your study group or in your section, but go ahead and make friends early that you can, you know, lean on when you, when you, when you get one of those days where it's like, whoa, this is too much. It's supposed to be too much. Our old Dean, Margaret, she used to always say, it's grad school and it's grad school at UCLA. This is supposed to be rigorous. We don't pull any punches just because you have a job and a 40 or 50 or 60 hour week pre-existing commitment, right? It's the same MBA in all of our programs, whether you keep a job or not. So it's supposed to be hard. So don't, don't feel bad. Like, wow, why is this kicking my butt today? Because it's grad school and it's supposed to do that. And you wouldn't be happy if it was easy. So, you know, that's the kind of intellectual side, but the human heart side is, yeah, but when I feel bad, I just feel bad. So anticipate that in advance. And that's the, it takes a village where, you know, that's the African proverb. It takes a village to raise a child. Of course, it takes a village to create a C-suite executive. Nobody gets to the top rungs in an organization just, oh, look at me, I'm so talented. You earn trust over years and you build alliances and you build credibility and you build respect. And that's part of what you're building in this next thousand days to reinvent yourself. The, you know, the three year FEMA journey is, is, a, is, a, is an opportunity to reinvent and rediscover, you know, like who could I be? Not just who am I now, but who could I be and how does this network help me get there? So that's as quick as I can do it, Sarah. <laughs> That was, that was, no, that was great. I loved it. Um, what I would say is this, before we go into our breakout rooms, um, two other things that I, I, well, one other thing that I wanted to mention is um, going back to what James was talking about last week with the clubs. Um, we do obviously have professional clubs. We have identity clubs, but then we also have activity clubs. Um, you have tennis club, you have intramural, you know, um, ultimate Frisbee. I realize that right now, you know, being COVID, we're, we're not necessarily all on campus and we're not, you know, all together, but, you know, hopefully we will not be remote, you know, for three years. There is going to be a time that you're going to be back on campus. You're going to be with people. Um, think about, you know, those clubs. Um, I know there's also, um, Anderson Creative and IDEA. Those are two other clubs on campus that I know do creative. Ooh, the wine club is still meeting regularly. That's a good one to know because you can do that one remotely. Um, so before we, before we break out into breakout rooms, um, I think I put everybody's hand down. So does anybody have any pressing questions? Um, it can be just a, a question in general, or it can be a, you know, a question about inspiration. Um, and what I would say is for any of our people on the call that are 2021s, 2022s, or 2020s, you know, during your breakout room, um, you know, the prompt is going to be, you know, what inspires you, um, what keeps you going, provide some tips, you know, provide some, some thoughts on what you did to keep going. Um, so first off, anybody have any questions and you can raise your hand or you can just come off mute, um, whichever is easier. All right, seeing none, I will have Dylan go ahead and set up the breakout rooms you will be for for our new people uh you'll be in groups of four or five um, and we recommend that you take about five minutes each to talk just make sure that each one of you gets a chance to talk obviously we want the conversations to happen organically so it isn't a you know one person presents just make sure that everybody's getting a chance to talk um dylan 
Dylan will be sending out notifications a little bit um, on, you know, hey, you've got five minutes, you've got 10 minutes. Um, make sure that your third person or fourth person is talking. Um, I do see that I have a question that came up in the Zoom chat. Although most of the classes are online, will the library and gym be open on campus? My understanding is that the answer to that is no. Um, the library has a lot of online elements, which you still have full access to. The actual gym will be um, closed. Um, I do not know where they're at with Ackerman and the student union. I think we're still waiting to find out on that. Um, but the gyms will definitely not be open um, and the library, the physical campus library will not be open. Okay, well, Sarah, thank you for being my first repeat co-host and uh, it's just fun. I love ideating with you and you guys in the background, Sarah's working on something, but it's, it's under wraps, it's top secret right now. Uh, but she's a hardworking um, executive board member of FEMA Council. And in advance for next week, Perry, James, and Megan, thank you guys for um, helping practice to make sure you can run this without me next week. I will be on vacation, yes. Um, so we're now gonna send you into approximately 32 rooms of four to five people each, uh, kind of self-pace, uh, you know, make sure everybody gets a chance to share. Listening is just as powerful as speaking. And the question, you know, what keeps you motivated? What keeps you going? And uh, if, you're, if you're a second, third, or recent grad, second year, third year, or recent grad, please share tips and tricks from your point of view. And if you're new, just enjoy meeting and uh, everybody welcome. And again, Sarah, thanks so much. So here we go into the rooms. Uh, we'll, you know, we'll officially end at 1250, but if you want to stay longer, you know, we leave the room open. Okay. Enjoy.